finished in time. I went out to a bookstore, that was before the days of Amazon and things like that, I went out to a bookstore, and I bought a book for every one of our department heads. And I inscribed every book with, I know we can, I know we can. The book was the little engine that could. <laughs> and sure enough, we made it. And when we were doing Avatar, 14, 15 years later, working with some of the same crew, there we were several weeks away from the start of production, feeling that same anxiety. Two different department heads we'd worked with before brought in to me the book I had given them 14 years ago, saying that they knew we could, they, they knew we could. Now, as a producer, I'm excited and I'm engaged by the idea of taking what could be possible and finding innovations that make it a reality to allow us to tell stories to people that could not be told before, to tell them in a way that make it more effective, more emotionally engaging. This allows the, the themes of the film to come through. This allows your audience to, to respond to your movies and want to come back and yearn for more. We use technology, as I mentioned, to bring the ship of Titanic to life. The technologies we use then were the forecursor for what we would later use on Avatar. And I think one of the things that's important is always to be looking ahead. If you look back, and I'll show you some more about, about throughout Jim Cannon's career of what he did, he was always thinking, okay, if I'm applying this now, what will it allow me to do? In the future. As I mentioned, the ship itself in Titanic was a character. We needed to find a way to bring that to life so it wouldn't look like the 1950s model ship sitting in fake water. And one of the key ingredients of that was to populate the ship, to bring the ship really to life where you could see life on the ship. And we turned to something at the time that was called motion capture where we would go into an environment and capture the performance of extras into a computer. And those performances would then populate the ship itself. I'd like to show you a clip of this process. Come on the second clip. <coughs> so there you have a mother and daughter on what we call a motion capture stage. There are about 12 infrared cameras around the stage. Those cameras are reading the reflective quality of the dots, the balls, that the performers are wearing. Based on what one camera sees and what another camera doesn't see, the computer knows how to put that object in three-dimensional space. There you go. That's what the computer sees. That movement is then applied to a model. That model is then outfitted with what we call a texture map. Think of that as wardrobe, think of that as costumes. And we can take this performance and put it into any shot of the model ship that we shot on a stop motion, frame by frame basis. We populate the ship using these type of people, these type of performances. We can change the wardrobe and suddenly it's a different person. We can use only a clip. Here you see the model that we shot at, at, on stop frame, one frame at a time. You'll then see a digital version of that model that is populated with the extras that we captured with motion capture. Captain Smith up there on the bridge. And now you see a clip from the final shot in the movie, close up of it. And finally, a final shot from the film itself. And in your fields, you have the ability to push 
how learning is taught. You have the ability to do something that prior generations could not do. And that is to deliver learning at the moment of need. How exciting is that? How exciting is that you have to be able to deliver? You have to be able to do it in a way that engages the learner and gives them a connection to the teacher of the lesson. The same way that our movies need to give a connection to the characters that we put up on the screen. And that connection to characters is something that James Cameron is great at doing. And when working with Jim, I tell people that Jim dreams and dreams, and I have to make them a reality. I guess that really my key role as a producer is to hire people around me who are better at their jobs than I could ever be. And we look to hire not just the best people in their fields. We look for people who don't want to rest on the laurels of their past. We want people who are not afraid to push the boundaries of technology and creativity. We want to find people who are not afraid to innovate. Because each project we tackle, we seek to separate ourselves from the, the pack and innovation. Innovation is the key to that. You can look at every one of the movies we've done that have been successful. Innovation and not being afraid to try something. Oftentimes we try something and it doesn't work. And I think it's about how you get up from your failures that define you more than your successes. And we try to get up from our failures, and we have them, and to move on. And we try to turn to other people and enlist their support. And we try to say, here's what we want to do. Here's our dream of something. Can you help us figure out how to make it a reality? Innovations that service the product we define, defined. That's what we need to do. It's not the other way around. It's not saying, here's the technology, how do we use it? Define what works for you, what your goals are. That's what we tried to do on Honey, I Should Trump the Kids. The innovation was to, to bring the worlds in, in the audience into the world of the shrunken kids, to make them feel a part of that environment. On Dick Tracy, the innovations we, we use were makeup and appliances and how to figure it out. And one of the things that I think we all must do, and we have to do it when we make our movies, is we have to believe that we can do the impossible. And when working with Jim Cameron, that happens a lot. Jim writes his scripts without regard to what is possible. Write your business models without regard to what is possible. Find ways to make them a reality. Find ways to, to, to challenge yourself, to, to, to make e-learning and, and, and the best it can possibly be. Don't limit yourself to the technologies that are available today. When Jim wrote Terminator the first time, he wrote a, a script that had both Terminator 1 and Terminator 2 combined into one script. But he looked at the landscape of technology and he knew that he could not do the second part right at the very beginning. So he waited. And he separated the two. But that idea and something he thought would work of the, of the metal man coming on the floor and all those things, he saved. But it was an idea he thought of before the technology was there. I want to go back now and share with you a clip that goes back to, to some of the earlier stuff Jim did in working with computer-generated imagery. And he had the vision of what it could allow us to do in engaging the audience. Can we please run the next clip? <laughs> 